as expected, absolutely nothing important. So let's get on with this war and finish it up so that we can have all of the nice things in the world. That fleet, we have to kill that fleet. And apparently we have a trade dispute against Fazan. I'm not sure exactly what trade they're going to be threatening. They're, they've got like three provinces that all border us. Who exactly are they going to trade with competitively? My Imperator, we have finally managed to convert the heretics of Bozok to the one and true faith. Excellent. Um, actually, they're at low war enthusiasm. They might surrender now if all I want is this. Can I get this? I can, actually. That's... ah. Okay, so that's for 25% war score. Can I actually get anything... Can I get you to release anybody? Barah. That doesn't sound particularly important. I can't even see it, so uh, I'll go with a no on that. Actually, there's a couple of one province miners down here, isn't there? Cochin? Cochin? And Venard. Okay. New plan. That is going to be what we ask for. So we're probably going to have to take out these two provinces here. On the other hand, if we're only taking three and we have two missionaries free, that's what we'll convert first. Because I know that you can actually convert these guys really quickly with your missionaries at the uh, strength level that ours are. Come on. Siege that place down. Madurai is one. So you can move to here. Is that enough? That it is enough. That is indeed enough. Um, actually, I don't want to do it just yet, though, because I would like to destroy their fleet. Simply as a revenge thing. Pretty much. So we'll do that. We'll wait it out until we've uh, taken this place and then killed their fleet. A native rising? Those bastards. And the siege of... Really? This place has held out longer. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure why we're getting this message, seeing as we haven't actually discovered either of these places, but it's nice to know that the Aztecs are still hanging around, doing something. The, mis the Mixtec no longer considered the Aztecs a rival, but I wonder... I wonder why. Yeah, I can't go and investigate. Things are happening in the world that we are not aware of, and I like it. <laughs> oh, hello. I see your army there. Are you going to try and march on us? Oh, excellent. Even if you do, it makes no difference. And Norway has a new rival. Because of course they do. Uh, we'll deal with the Cardinal in a minute. Ooh, Poland making moves. They've announced Norway as their new rival. And we won the second Battle of Cormoran Cape. So, because we have done that, you, yes, you, you can go back to privateering, and I will have you privateer in this area, and this fleet can go here, and I'll actually rename it. This one is going to be the Indian fleet. There we go. A cardinal was exposed. The cardinal in Mecklenburg has been rumored to be of weak character, but has always been discreet enough not to warrant further investigation. Now it appears that foreign spies from Gotland, who have had their eye on him, put an end to this and exposed his sins to the Pope. Oh dear. What an unhanded way of getting at our influence. Those bastards. And we can start marching back, so I'm going to send this army here and this army here. Did I send off the demand? I might not have sent off. No, I didn't, of course, because I wanted to win that last battle. So that should... There we go. Oops. Stop it. Stop it. So we completed a mission. We gained a presence in India. We got 10 prestige for it. And apparently an Indian coast thing here. I'm not sure why we got that. Regrettably, we have lost the conquest Casus Belli against all those people who are hanging around. And Fazan has become officially westernized. That might actually be the first African miner that's become fully westernized. Yeah, it is. Unless Ghana beat them to it. Ghana did beat them to it. I guess I must have noticed that at some point. Huh, how about that? 
So they've ceded all these places to us, it cost us 150 diplomatic power, but that's okay. We gained some prestige and we suffered some aggressive uh, expansion, but the aggressive expansion penalty will all go against these guys, and they can't actually effectively fight us. So now we need to pick a new goal. We can improve the defences in Varney, we can form an alliance with Poland, nah, I'm good. Or we can crush Russia. Crush Russia, yes. Our fierce rival of Russia... <laughs> English. Our fierce rival of Russia is embroiled in a war, and weaker than we are. We need to take them down a notch and declare war upon them. I guess we could. But I'm not, just, I'm not really seeing why I would want to. I guess... I guess I could do it to try and stop the Timurids from expanding so much, but... Really, I don't care. I mean, it's going to take them at least another two gobbles to get all of the Timurids destroyed, so right now I don't have to do a damn thing. I still outnumber them. I can still raise more men than they can ever hope to raise. So I'm not entirely sure what the game is trying to tell me here. It's like, hey, you should probably deal with this. No, nah, not really. I'm cool. Okay, so the provinces that I want to convert first are these ones, because these ones are very, very easy. So, I don't want to do either of these missions, so I guess we'll take this one and hope that uh, once we've finished it, there'll be a decent one available. So, conveniently, it's this particular one, and we will build... What was it that they wanted us to build? They wanted us to build a star fort. I think we can oblige them. Star fort me. And we can also do some national decisions. So we could form the French nation, which I don't want to do, so I'm going to untick that. And we can found the Indian Trade Company. Our interest in the East India Company is based chiefly upon hopes and ambitions aroused by the enormous revenues produced by the initial ventures of other companies. There are no other companies, but okay. At the same time, there is also a desire upon the part of Hadrian the second, to play a dominant role in contemporary world trade, a desire that isn't necessarily wholeheartedly endorsed by our country's local merchants. So you need to have at least diplomatic level 10 in tech, and you need to have, well, a port somewhere along here. And that will give you extra money, not really a big deal for us, and also an extra merchant with some extra global trade power, and I like merchants, so let's grab one of them. And we'll send him to... You know, I'm not really sure... I've never really been all that up on how the trade works when it comes to sending your merchants out. Um, I'm going to send him to Alexandria, though. And I'm going to have him transfer trade power, and I'm going to assume that that's going to increase my income somehow. I... Just, I don't know. Somehow, it will do something, and we will all be happy about it. In the meantime, this intrigues me. So Russia is kicking the crap out of them. They're really losing. I wonder what, how much they're actually going to lose, though, because Russia, Russia can only take so much. Like, they want a lot of land, but they can only take so much before the overextension stops them from, well, extending. This could be interesting. This could be very interesting. All these native uprisings. Come on, guys. We're not that bad. Julian Nicholas. The reputation of him is second to none. Our sailors can sail further than our other... Wait, what? Our sailors can sail further than other comparable nations thanks to his talents. We can get us some stability or we can get some prestige and it doesn't really make a difference which one we do because, well, we already have three stability, so let's grab that. And Russia keeps trying to fabricate claims on us. Don't do that, man. And the Timurids have accepted peace on the following terms. They will be forced to give Russia 10% of their income each month for war reparations. Not bad. They ceded 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 provinces. And they ended the vassalization of a certain country, which I assume is in India somewhere. The peace will cost Russia 248 diplomatic power. And with the conquest Casus Belli, they gain 15 prestige and suffer 27 aggressive expansion penalty. So how much do we hate them for that? We actually don't hate them all that much, I suppose because it's not really happening on our borders, like it's not happening right here and there was a small country and they ate it. That's interesting. It's very interesting indeed. Opposing military schools? Hell no. 
and Alice has become fully westernized. So opposing military schools. Occasionally hostilities would erupt between opposing military schools. Okay, so we get to pick one of these. Extra forces, extra discipline, versus extra morale and extra fort defense. We'll go with attack is always the best option. And Mecklenburg is now the seat of Cardinal again, because there's only, I think there's only two or three Catholic nations apart from us. So there's Poland, there's Gotland, there's Denmark, and Norway, for definite. There's Bjarmia? There's Bjarmia? I don't know, that place. Nope, a Tengri. Yeah, there's only four Catholic nations that I can see. Oh, of course, the little minor ones. I'm an idiot. And I could have just clicked on this in the first place. The Papal State doesn't really count because it doesn't exist as such. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six in total. Seven of the Cardinals belong to us, seven to Poland. The rest are split between other people. Not that bad, really. I would love to become controller of the Courier. Just for, just for a little bit. Just to be amused by it. So we completed our mission, and let's see if we got anything better when it re-ruled it for us. Form an alliance with Poland, I really don't care. Or claim a province from Russia, again, I really I don't care. Sure, we'll pick this one. It's a, it's a province over here in Spain, I believe it's right here. Yeah, there we go. They want us to convert it to Norman. Well, I don't really have that much of a desire to do so. I mean, eventually, maybe, but right now, I, I've got better things to do with my diplomatic power. I, culture conversion is not a really big deal for me right now, because even if they rose in rebellion, which they're not, there currently aren't any rebels. Oh, wait, now there are. Some nationalists for some very small countries. Well, we'll deal with it eventually. Oh, hello. That's interesting. So the Protestant Reformation. Um, this will be severely uh, expanded upon in the upcoming expansion that they're releasing, Common Sense. Uh, Basically what they're planning on doing is making other religions kind of interesting, which will probably mean that if I wasn't playing a huge country, and I'm going to try and update to the, to the new patch, it's currently... Oh, it's actually almost release time for that current patch. Um, I'm recording very late at night. So I might actually just record a single episode now and finish the, uh, finish the session and see if I can update to Common Sense, because it looks really, really good. I like the idea there. Um, Protestant would be kind of viable if I was a small nation, but I'm not, so unfortunately I can't do that. I would love to show off Protestantism, because it's really, really cool. But smaller countries like uh, like Grodno and Poland and maybe Polotsk, they might go into uh, the Protestants or Reformed religions. Uh, we are going to have to deal with the consequences of this, though. Uh, we are going to have to deal with uh, centers of Reformation popping up around our lands, they might pop up in our lands, uh, not just around them in other countries, and we'll have to deal with trying to convert people back to the Catholic faith, and uh, we'll be able to embrace the Counter-Reformation at some point. We might not, uh, we might not need to, depending on how many of our provinces actually get converted over, but it should be, it should be quite interesting. That's quite early actually, they're not act 100%. It usually pops after they get to 100% reform desire. So now I'm not really concerned about picking things that will increase Catholic reform desire, reform desire, because, well, the Reformation's already happened. So thoughts of disapproval against the Roman Catholic Church are spreading across Europe as a result of the increasing corruption of monks and clerics. So basically people like Rodrigo Borgia. Voices are raised questioning the current principles and greed of the church. A monk in Grodno has for some time expressed deep concerns, and is now openly declaring his discontent with the church, paving the way towards a reformation of the faith. So he's our Martin Luther. So is Grodno now Protestant? Like, legit Protestant, or is it just one county? It's just one county at the moment. This could be interesting. We'll just have to see what happens with it. And apparently I have two diplomats free, I guess. Am I buttering up a lot still? I think I am. No, I'm not. Okay. 
make sure they're happy. Let them enjoy our wonderfulness. And you're still supporting an heir in Poland. Good, good. We shouldn't need to increase um, increase relations with them. They're pretty happy with us right now. We can increase relations later if we need to. So we took decisions here. The Conventicle Act in Norway and the Conventicle Act in Grodno. What is that? Have I got that option? I do have that option. The Conventicle Act. So what is it? Discourage nonconformists by forbidding any form of religious assembly of more than five people other than those approved by the established church. What does it do? Increased missionary strength and a lack of tolerance towards heretics. Well, we are going to be the one true faith, so... Sounds like we have to do it. And the De Heretico Cor... Cumberendo? De Heretico Cumberendo, I guess. Make it an illegal offence punishable by burning at the stake to either own or produce a translation of the Holy Bible. Which gives us extra tax for some reason, extra missionary strength, and Catholicism gains a little bit of reform desire. Well, they've already managed to have that reform happen, so let's do it. I think you'll get events for burning people at the stake, so that could be quite interesting. Let's see how this all goes, I guess. So, I guess if we put on the religious map mode, we might see provinces popping into Protestantism. Well, Grodno is going to be a center of reform, right? Yeah, a religious center, religious zeal. So, if they try to convert it back, it won't work for a very, 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 very long time. And it should start uh, converting the provinces around it. So, we have a province bordering Grodno itself, so that might actually be a place that we have to worry about it. I mean, I'm not overall worried, we're more a massive, massive country, and what's really going to happen? Not all that much. But it does interest me. So, oh hey, we finished another, uh, another conversion. Excellent, we'll send them to Varney. And now that we've embraced all those wonderful, wonderful, wonderful missionary power increasing things, we can probably finish this up, this whole conversion thing within the next decade or so, which is pretty good. The Reformation actually, Protestantism firing actually wasn't that far off the historical date if I remember correctly, I think it's around 1604, so give or take 10 years, you know, that's not too bad, that's probably average for an EU4 game. It might happen quicker the more Catholic nations you have, obviously, because the more nations you have that are able to pick those options that increase reform desire, the, and then do, obviously the more, you know, more hurried it's going to be. And a colony has become self-sustaining. Excellent. That is fantastic, because now we can do this. Do you have an explorer? Oh wait, you don't need one, of course. You don't need an explorer. You do need to have a conquistador. We'll just casually sail him back across the world. And you are going to go investigate. Find out what's over there for me. What did you find? You found excellent land. Cape Verde. So I believe this is one of them that has a, uh, that has a dynamic name as well. So in a about three months we'll find out what it is. Oh hey, new pope. And we managed to convert heretics. Jolly good. So a Danish Pope. And still it's Eugenius the Fourth. I'm I'm confused as to why it's not updating the names correctly. I have no idea. And we're still not gonna pick this. Because although tolerance of heretics wouldn't be that bad in of itself, uh, while you're trying to convert them back to your faith, it's not the greatest idea to be able to, uh, to, to have a particular tolerance for heretics. So we're not going to bother with it. We'll wait. The Bible has been translated. A priest in Brest has translated the Bible into our languages and started to... just... wait, what? Has started to distribute copies of it in nearby villages. That sounds like an Irish name. But it's not. It's, it's in Brittany. Uh, heresy burn the priest in his books, which will give people who are not Protestant positive relations with us. Or great news, 
spread these Bibles far and wide, and a province changes to Protestant Protestantism, and uh, no, I don't want that. Heresy, burn the book, burn the priest in his books. He's doing bad things. He's a bad man. I would really like the second colonist. That is something I would appreciate. So what does it become? Capvert. I know I'm saying that wrong, it's not pronounced that way in French, but... Huh, that's interesting. We can probably put, uh... oh wait, I already did it. I'm so clever. I was thinking, oh, I should probably put those ships into port. Yeah, so there we go. Wystruck, which is the province that directly borders Grodno, has converted to a Protestant... Uh, has converted to Protestantism. And because they have, they've got religious zeal, which will last until 1619, which is not too long. But you will need to convert it back. And as you can see, at this speed, Wystruck will never be fully converted. The missionary will have a monthly progress of 0.0% due to the following factors. That's a 10%... Ooh. I probably should have... Uh... I probably should have paused that, so I could deal with that pop-up. I thought it was paused. Well, a naive relative thing happened, and I'm not sure which choice it chose for us. I'm assuming it's not anything too bad. We should probably start reducing inflation, seeing as we actually are in debt right now. Well, not in debt, but in a deficit. So let's reduce it. Actually, let's just reduce it all the way. Why not? Go large or go home. There we go. Now we're making bank. And we can get that colonist. There we go. Second colonist is a good colonist. And we apparently had discoveries spread. I think it was probably over here. It was. And what did we find? If I remember right, that's Diego Garcia. I think. So, let's see. How many troops can you take? You can take 24 regiments. How handy. I have 24 regiments right here. So let's split this army in half, and we'll give them Titus Probus. Actually, no, we'll give the other army Titus Probus. They will board ship, and you will sail right over here. Because we've discovered the actual archipelago, we don't have to have an explorer on board to actually go visit it. Which is nice. It means I don't have to worry about transferring people over and over. So, border friction. Our rightful provinces are held by other nations, and our government seems to be making no effort to recover them. What use are they anyway? Proclaims the broadsheet. Widespread dissatisfaction with our failure to recover our claimed provinces is sweeping the nation. We can annoy Russia some more, or we can take some diplomatic power hits. Um, I'm just going to annoy Russia, because I really don't care. What are they going to do? Invade me? Unlikely. Alright, go over there, discover for me what this is. And there's a new monarch in Ali, a new sultan, and he has introduced taxes and created a Sheikh ul Islam office. You can sail back over there. And Diego Garcia, you're not very profitable, but you are a strategically important place. Mainly because uh, if we if we colonize here, we can start heading towards the Cape. Which is something that I'm not disinclined to do. The Cape is very, very profitable. Especially if you convert over to, uh, to Victoria 2, which we are planning on doing. Because in Victoria 2, obviously there's a lot of resources down there that get discovered if you're playing as the Transvaal or South Africa or whoever it is that you picked to play as. So what do we got here? We got some more galleys. Excellent, you can go join the Indian fleet, sail forth, sail forth. There's not really a whole ton of stuff that I want to get done right this very second. I mean, I guess I could go and buy some more military stuff. How much power do we need to get this? We'll have enough in six years. I kind of don't really feel like we need to go for military technology 17 straight away, so we might just go around building some forts. Another privateer captain has gone rogue, so we're going to lose some money out on that, which is unfortunate. But it could be worse. Could be worse. One of the things that I'm happy they're doing as a change in, uh, in common sense is that they're removing this goddamn cost of monarch points 
to build buildings. This pleases me greatly. So let's see. Well, we might as well fortify our border with the Timurids. Because the Timurids are probably going to give way to the Russians soon. And the Russians are a lot more scary than the Timurids are. So I want to make sure that our, uh, our border with them is properly defended. Because if it's not, then uh, they're going to come rampaging across the border. And I don't particularly look forward to that. So let's build up all the forts that we possibly can along this way. Let's uh, finish fortifying here. Fish is going to be created in our new colony. I do like the sound of that. Incompetent diplomats, because naturally. We have appointed too many inbred nobles to the position of diplomat. They are making fools of themselves, which is probably expected. But what is worse, they are also embarrassing our country. They are of noble blood, we lose some prestige, and we take a fabrication of claims penalty and aggressive expansion impact. Or we can replace them for 50 diplomatic power. I'm just going to replace them. I mean, I'm not really fabricating claims, but I don't really want to have to have that sitting there. I mean, if I if I attack somebody, I don't really want to have to worry too much about the uh, the potential annoyance of having too high aggressive expansion. Because if Russia gets the chance, I don't think they would win, but I think that the war would become very long and protracted. So if they could take the chance to attack us and get a coalition against us, they would totally do it. And they might even get some friends in the way of uh, in the way of Poland and the Timurids and etc. etc. Maybe not Poland. Poland would probably stay loyal to us. And it wouldn't be a particular threat, it would just take ages to deal with. Oh hello. Alright, so let's actually this is a perfect spot to uh, to end the video, I think. We'll have a quick look over here, see what's been going on, and then I will see if I can update to common sense when it comes out, which should be at some point tonight. Tonight, my time, so present me to future you, I guess. Maybe we'll be updating. I hope so. I did like some of the changes that came along because when we were playing Crusader Kings 2, we were able to update as we went to a pretty late version of the game. And common sense looks amazing. Parliaments? That sounds cool. So let's see what's going on down here. We've got Ming looking strong. How strong are you, Ming? Actually, we can probably look in the legend now. How strong is Ming? Ming has go for armies go for country names Ming how many troops do you have under arms you currently have 108,000 men under arms and 143,000 manpower in reserve good god once they get started they're gonna get started Japan is a unified country cool Japan has 50,000 troops under arms so they're just over their force limit I wonder if they're actually fighting against Manchu. They might be. Are they going to potentially conquer Manchu? Maybe. I don't know, actually. What about Korea? How much has Korea got to face off against them with? 22,000 troops. What about Manchu? Okay, Manchu and Japan are pretty much even. It'll be down to who can get fleets where to get their troops across to the other's countries. And if they can get enough of them. So that's pretty cool. Japan is a unified country. I wonder if you could look at... Can you look at the previous rulers, see when it was formed? Can you do that? I guess you could if you transferred over to Japan by tag switching. So who are they currently fighting? Oh, they're currently at war with Manchu. What are they fighting for? Let's see now, wars. I love the ledger. The ledger is fantastic. Current wars. The Manchurian Conquest. Oh, Manchu is trying to conquer something. Tokokachi. I guess maybe that's... Is that one of the places I can't see? I think so. Yeah, I think it's probably here. Because I can't see it. But Japan apparently holds it, and it's not one of these places. How is Japan doing? Are they allied with anybody? No. There's one province left. One province outside of the Japanese fold. That's interesting. Okay. Well. I'm gonna... This wasn't the decision I was gonna ask you guys, but it seems like a good enough spot, so I'm... 
This wasn't the decision that I had planned, but I'm going to go with it. We should probably back one of these countries as somebody who we just kind of make nice with, so we've got a, a port to stick in, a storm, you know, if we if we need to get over there we can have uh, fleet basing rights so our ships don't suffer complete and utter terrible attrition coming up here. So. Which one do we pick? Do we pick Ming or Japan? I'm not going to say Manchu because Manchu is going to get eaten by one or the other, I would imagine. So Ming or Japan, which one of them do we kind of just sort of take aside and go, hey, so uh, we're from way over there in, the, in Europe and uh, we, were, we were hoping that we could potentially have fleet basing rights and we'll prop you up against other enemies who might come across here, you know, these guys called Russia and these guys called the Timurids. What do you say? So which one do we pick? Do we back Japan? Do we back Ming? And if you can make a compelling case for it, you can pick somebody else. If you can make a compelling case for it, argue it. If it's good, I'll listen. So, until next time, this is me, Grey Hunter, saying thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video, where maybe we may be updated. I, I kind of hope so, but I guess I'll have to find out.